Yo guys, so before we get into this video, I just want to talk to you about foottrading.co.uk. This is a website set up by myself and Dan, aka V273. We brought together our market knowledge into one place to help you guys trade on FIFA. There are free trading guides on here, which are literally them ones there. They teach you how to trade with special cards, icons, and silver cards. All of those are massively profitable methods on this game. We've also got paid for areas, which is £10 a month. That gets access to spreadsheets for special cards, for icons and for silvers, with the maximum buy prices and the minimum sell prices on them. You cannot lose coins. They are tried and tested, um, li literally in every market condition, and they work very, very well. We have people who have made 3.5 million coins in a week. Even people who do it once a week are making sort of five, 600k from the trading. It is very, very good. And for £15, you get access to a live deals area, which is where we're going to be putting all the live filters we come up with. As you guys have seen in the 0 to 2 million series, I'm pretty good at finding sniping filters and stuff like that. We're going to start putting those into that live filters area for you guys to make as many coins as possible. That is £15 a month for those, and we update that as often as we possibly can. You also get access to our tool, the ChemStyle Calculator, which was built. Essentially, let's say, for example, you buy a card that's not on the spreadsheet, because some aren't on the spreadsheet, we are adding lows all the time, but there are literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of ChemStyle uh, cards on this account. But let's say, for example, you buy a card for £25,000. Uh, 25000 not 25 coins. And you say, Hunter... I'm not gonna lie, Calculate, man. it will tell you the minimum you should be selling that card for, and it's it's a really invaluable tool, it's absolutely brilliant. But yeah, like I say, £10 a month for tier 1, £15 a month for tier 2, it is a really brilliant, brilliant website. If you want to get involved, click the link down below, come over to uh, come over to foottrain.co.uk, check it out and see what you think. But for now, let's get into this video. Yo, what is up guys, welcome to a new video with me, Fuzzball40. As always, if you're new around here, please do consider subscribing down below clicking the like button, it's all massively appreciated and all really helps the channel to grow. Don't forget, you can watch me do stuff live, click the link down below, come over to Twitch. Again, one of the fastest growing Twitch channels over there. So make sure you come and get involved. It's a lot easier for me to help you trade when I do it live. I can give you as much information in the video as possible, but you guys directly asking me questions in my Twitch chat is usually how you're gonna get much more information. Do not forget to check out yesterday morning's upload. That was a team takedown with Capcom Tom, so thank you very much to him for having me on. But before we go any further, massive, massive, massive thank you from me to you guys for 10,000 subscribers on YouTube. It's insane, absolutely insane. We're snowballing, we're growing so, so quickly. I can't thank you guys enough for it. I guess the support you guys are giving me helps me to keep grinding, bringing out all the videos that I am bringing out. Hopefully they're making you guys coins and you guys are able to get better teams as a result of that without spending FIFA points. So yeah, really, 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 really just humbled by it. So thank you so, so much. But this video is going to be part of a few that are going to come in the coming week, days and weeks in terms of how to make coins from Team of the Season. Now, this video is going to, it's going to go a little bit into detail about what's to come in terms of the cards themselves. But really, I'm interested in teaching you guys how you can make coins right now, or we'll say might make coins right now, how you can start stocking your club up right now in order to make coins when it comes round. If you've watched any of my other promo videos, you will know that this is a rinse and repeat method you can use for most promos, it always pays off without fail. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll get into it and I'll just start talking to you about bits and bobs. First thing we should do, we'll talk about this community team of the season so far. You can see all these tabs up here, which we're going to be looking at. Um, basically, what they've called it is the team of the season so far. I quite like it, a bit of humour from EA. Um, but they've, they've made it clear that there's not going to be a second team of the season. There's only going to be, there's not going to be another team of the season. This is team of the season, essentially. But they've just renamed it team of the season so far. Uh, but we have a community vote. That's the first team of the week we need to look at, or team of the season even, we need to look at is the community vote. And I'm, gonna, I'm not going to lie, I don't want to be negative. It's a bit underwhelming. It's a little bit underwhelming. I look at the players, like the forwards. Zaha would be quite nice. Um, but I look at these guys and how many of these guys are realistically going to be usable for the meta this year. Very, very few of them uh, for the forwards. I don't know why Foothead aren't showing the ratings, but... So there's a few like, okay, you're cool. Midfielders, Busquets, we always see... Thiago we saw last year, both of those got one. Fernandinho, I mean, Fernandinho would be very, very nice. Uh, Casemiro, like Moutinho, Lucas Leiva, Brandt. Philippe Anderson would be cool. It's a bit underwhelming. There's, there's a few good cards in there, but it is a little bit underwhelming in my opinion. The flip side of it is, I think EA are doing what they can with what they've got. Uh, Grimaldo would be kind of cool. Trippier, I'd love to see. Joe Gomez is going to get in without a doubt. Let's just make that clear now. He's going to get in and be ridiculously overpowered and expensive. Uh, PK... He's going to need a ridiculous boost to be remotely usable. Godin, not so much, but still. Um, and then goalkeepers. Courtois will probably get it, but I'd love to see Leno get it. It would increase squad building options. I'd really like to see Leno get into this this most consistent because it would be nice to have that German goalkeeper in the Premier League 
makes linking a bit easier. Uh, personally, I'd like a Leno. I, I really would like a Leno. So that's the one that I, I, I've all of them pretty much, that's the one that I care about the most. But irrelevant of what it is, we've got to make the most, most of it and mo make the best of it. I have a feeling that they'll get ridiculous boosts because I think the power curve's ahead of a lot of these players now. So I feel like we are going to get ridiculous boosts. But the question mark here is how do you make coins from it? Now, let's run over what we can expect and what we've had in promos so far this year because the best way to trade on this game is to see what we've had in other promos and see the fact that that's been repeated all the time. So the first thing we'll always talk about is daily SBCs. We don't get daily necessarily all the time. Um, through Fit Birthday, we've got close to daily, but not quite daily. But we do tend to get every other day, usually minimum every other day, SBCs whereby we get, I don't know, a rare electron pack or a prime electron pack. And what happens is when we get these daily SBCs, now we haven't got one really on the game at the moment, I don't think that we can go, but I can give you an example from for one that's not really, doesn't matter as much, but it is that. The Premier League Challenge, right? For reference, I also think these are very good. I think this is very good for me yeah, to help people stack up their club with packs for the tots that's coming. I, I really, really do like it. But this for, this, for example, right? So rare players, exactly 11. England players, minimum two. Clubs, minimum three. Uh... Player quality gold, team chemistry max 75. So this isn't the best example, but we did see a rise yesterday. Now, I don't know if it's still risen. Uh, let's go league, right mid, Premier League concept players. I just want to find a like an English right mid, right mid. They got up yesterday, but I don't know if they've held the same value since then. Let's go Antonio, for example. I just want to see what he's selling for on the market at the moment. Okay, so there you go. So this is exactly the point that I'm making, okay? Mikel Antonio is at 4,400 coins right now. He's, he, rose, he rose last night with this. This is why I advise right now, as you watch this video, to go out and start investing in wingers and fullbacks for major leagues because it always, always, always pays off. Anyone that watches the streams or has watched a video of mine before will know it's, I've been a massive advocate of it all year. Wingers and fullbacks, major leagues always make coins. Now, the difference with this is Firstly, go and smack these players, by the way, right now. Go and make coins from them. The difference with this is, is if it requires sometimes the, the major league, major nations. So let's say, for example, it's a German from the Bundesliga. And they'll be the ones that will make bank. Or Spanish from La Liga. They're the ones that will make bank, for example. But sometimes the off-league ones do. Now, if you remember the other day, I'm going to show you Ademola Luckman, if I can find him amongst all these tabs. Uh, Ademola Luckman is there. So let's have a little look at Ademola Luckman. Now, he is an English from the Bundesliga, but it was an SBC the other day. That basically required, meant you had to have off-league ones. He, at that point, before it came out, was sat at 1,200. He got as high as 2-3. I was sending this guy, you guys saw it in the video. I was sending him consistently for 3K+. plus. Now, I would, if you're going to invest in this style of, of card, I would, have, I would advise spreading your bets. So, let's say, for example, you've got these cards now. Let's go to, I don't know, let's go Bundesliga right mids. No, I was looking a minute ago. This is Xbox, remember. PS, it's slightly different, but not massively. So, if you go right mids... League, Bundesliga, and we go gold. Now, there were quite a few here. I like Lookman there for 550. Now, bear in mind, he sells more than that normally anyway. It's just a good investment full stop if we compare his price. He's probably about eight, 900 coins at the moment. So it's just a good buy full stop. What's he at the moment? So no matter what, it's a good buy. You can see it. He's a good buy. Like, he's about 1,000 coins. Um... But you could be picking these guys up right now for 600 coins. You've seen this three there. One's just come on the market. Again, compare price, back out. Pick up everything that comes up at 600 coins. 700 coins even is fine. And you can buy into them. However, some of the SBCs will require, will require a higher rating. So if you can go for 81s, 80s, 82s, you'll, you'll make bank. You will make, at some point, they will be needed for an SBC. If it's the Bundesliga tops, for example, and it needs the Bundesliga players, you'll make bank from it. The problem you have here is holding. You have to be patient. Now, you, can, you have two choices. If you're the sort of guy that trades every single day on this game, do I think this is necessarily the best method for you? Not, not really, because it's spreading your bets across a lot of leagues and it means you have to sit there and assign. However, if you're the sort of guy who hasn't really got time to trade, you can go and spend 100, 200k on players like this and just leave them chilling. Just leave them chilling in your club, unassigned, relax, play your games or for weekend league and whatnot and wait for them to rise. Remember, throughout the whole week, they're going to go down in value. The only flip side to this is going to be those daily packs that EA are bringing out with Bundesliga players in them or whatever players those are in them. So let's say Bundesliga, La Liga, etc, etc, etc. That will spike the price of these, especially rares. Rares are always a good play. If you can get rare ones, I'm trying to think of a rare uh, right mid from this league. I think Bellarabi's spiked at the moment. Let's have a little look at Bellarabi, but I think he's up at the moment. 
This guy always motors, like absolutely motors. Anytime there's a decent SBC, and he's probably motored because of yesterday. This guy always motors. I've seen him get as high as 7 and 8K. I wouldn't advise going buying him at 3 2. I think you can buy him cheaper than that later in the week. But he always motors because number one, he's 82. He's Bundesliga. He's German. He, he fits all the criteria for an SBC like this. So he makes you bank. But that's, that's where you need to play this and think, right, do I want to go the lower end or do I want to go the higher end? There's a risk always with these methods, but do I think 600 coins a card on a Bundesliga winger or a Spanish league winger is, is a massive risk? Not really. I'm, I've, I've had my bets on them without a doubt them going up in value. I, I can't see there being any reason why they wouldn't go up in value. Um, but that's that, basically. Now, if you want to look at good fodder, go into Google, type, type in um, cheapest players by position, footbin, or by rating footbin, sorry. Cheapest players by rating footbin. It'll bring up the ratings for you. You can start looking at them. I would always advise major league investments. Don't go and buy on out of it. He might rise. Yeah, cool. Would I advise on out of it? Not at all. I'd advise people you to be looking at like Fabianski, Pacheco, Mata. They're the sort of guys I'd be bothered about. I really, really wouldn't be bothered about off the league. You don't need to. There's plenty of players from major leagues you can buy. But now let's talk about, let's get rid of Adam Ola Lookman. Let's start talking about fodder, okay? Now, during Team of the Season, we always see, always see a either guaranteed Team of the Season pack or other SBCs like we did in Foot Birthday. In Foot Birthday, for example. Now, we had a massive melting pot in uh, Foot Birthday because we had the mid-icon, then some really meta SBCs, stuff like that that were overpriced in my opinion, but it is what it is. We had that throughout the whole of Foot Birthday, but we had the mid-icon there to hold the prices up. Now on FIFA 19, Fodder had a relative value no matter when the game went, went in the game towards this point because Fodder was held up by the Icon SBCs. Icon SBCs meant that 84s, 85s, 86s, 87s were always in demand. This year, that's different. Those players drop quite heavily and climb quite heavily again depending on the content. And that's a really, really, really good way to make coins. Now I'm going to show you at all levels how that's been affected recently. So let's look at Timo Werner. So the 1st of April, he is sat on 18. He then spikes to 24, drops off again, back to 16, and then sees a massive, massive spike all the way up to 28k. So from 16,000 coins, Werner gets up to 28k. Now, I've told you guys this before with Fodder. It works with all of them without fail. They will go up in value. That is a fact. It's not an opinion. They will go up in value because an SBC will require them. Right now, it says Timo Werner is 19k on the market that was updated an hour ago. What I always do with Footbin is I just go and check. I make sure. Um, the problem with someone like Timo Werner, let's do Rakitic for example actually because I'm going to show you Rakitic next. Rakitic. So Rakitic is on the market at the moment for about 19 probably, it looks like. Maybe a little lower. So about, about 19 give or take. Maybe a little bit higher than that because one for 18.75. But in and around 19k, 19.25, okay? Now let's look at Rakitic on the desktop. So there's Rakitic here. So 19.5, it's actually relatively accurate there, but it's not bad at all. Again, 1st of April, 17k. Gets up to 24k, drops off to 16k, gets as high as 28k again, before coming down after the promo ended and dropping drop here. Now, if you think about it, and you think about this realistically, if you pick up 10 Rakitic's at 18,000 coins, because I'm not saying necessarily... Go and buy them today. I'm talking tomorrow, Sunday, sort of squad battle rewards. They'll come up, they'll come down in price. If you pick up a Rakitic at 18k and you're actually selling, let's even say that 28 is an extreme. Although I think they actually got higher than that. This is an average price. They did get higher than that. But let's say you do sell them to about 28 actually. Let's go 28. After you take off tax, you're looking at about 8,000 coins profit a card. If you bought 10 of those Rakitic's, you're looking at 80,000 coins profit. Okay, so for 180,000 coin investment, you're looking at about 80,000 coins investment. 880,000 coins. If you go and put 1.8 mil into this and it hits 28k again, because he will, like I, I'm, I'm putting my neck on the line here, but there will be an SBC that causes these cards to rise. You will make good bank. You will make very, very good profit from this. And it might be the, the investment that make, means you can go and buy one of the players that you want without having to spend FIFA points. Other ones that, that we can like show the same thing again, Lorenzo Insigne, 87 rated, was 25k, got up to 33, dropped off to 24. As the promo went on the more SBCs, got as high as 39 on average. So again, if you bought them at as low point of 24 and sold them at 39, you're making something in the region of about, top of my head here, take 2k off, 37, about 13k profit a card, which is ridiculous. It's insane. Karen Benzema, exact same trend. Up he went to 35, dropped off to 24, climbed back up again, got again to 38. Most of the fodder cards you'll see at very similar values. Um, 
This is a random thing I was looking at, so let's get rid of that one. And then we look at it from other ones. Romelu Lukaku again. Held a relatively decent value full stop. Bang, 7-9. Jumps up, 14k. Nearly doubles in price. Again, Gianluigi Donnarumma. And also, they went higher than this. This is an average price they sold for. They got higher. 16k on Gianluigi Donnarumma from a low of 10... 10k, basically. All the way up to 16k. 5k profit a card. Mauro Icardi. Down at 7.4. Gets up to 14 again. And, and so on and so forth. And that just happens, basically. And... It's a really simplistic way to make coins that you guys can be stacking your club with right now. Even if you're a guy that hasn't got too many coins, if you've got 500k sat in your club, that Romelu Lukaku, for example, now right now he's sat at 8,900. He'll come down with squad battle rewards. Um, but if you've, got, if you've got 500k and you think, right, let me stick 100k into this. If you stick 100k into Romelu Lukaku at 7k, you pick up something in the region of about 14 of them, I think that is, give or take 14 of them. If you pick up 5k profit per card, on 14 Romelu Lukaku's at 70,000 coins you picked up. That's not an insignificant amount of coins when you've got 500 in the bank. Realistically, it's really not. So it's something that you should be mindful of when it comes to investing in this, that, that you can do this at all levels. 83s and 84s work as well. Just what I would do if I were you, go footbin. Look at some 83s from major leagues. Look at what their price is. Look at what they got to in foot birthday. If they climbed enough, if they didn't climb enough, and don't buy into them. If they, did, if they climbed a lot, buy into them at low prices. Again, Squad Battle Rewards is the place that I like this the most. You guys are watching this on Sunday. Squad Battle Rewards come out at midnight, so be mindful of that. Midnight UK time, that is. But yeah, that's essentially the fodder investments. And I want to talk a little bit about the most consistent itself because I'm planning on bringing more videos out for this and we'll go into more details about market trends with this sort of stuff. But essentially, this is what we're looking at with most consistent from last year, right? So most consistent from last year was, it was this team. In my opinion, a better team than it's likely to be this year. Even the bench was pretty stacked with like Rusillon, uh, Bergen wasn't bad, wan -Bissaka. It was a better team than I think we're going to get this year. But again, it is what it is. We can't really complain too much. Now let's look at Allen. Now, I don't want to talk too much about this style of thing, because, but we will talk a little bit about it. We're going to talk about the cards coming out of packs. But what I care about right now is the cards once they've been selected for, for most consistent. Once a card's been selected for most consistent and that card is out of packs, what happens? So Allen was in packs from the 10th of May, was when he kept went into packs. And if you look, he's at 7k there, bang, 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 spikes up to 11 before dropping off again, okay? Now, there's a rise in these cards, without a doubt, but the reason that I don't think the rise, I mean, it's a good rise, don't get me wrong, there's a good profit, there's 3,000 coins profit a card if you bought in on average, that's an average again, you might have bought in lower and sold higher, but last year, obviously, there was a, there was a minimum price that Fodder had because of the, the Icon SPCs. This year, there isn't that, so we tend to see the drop off be a lot heavier and then the climb back be a lot heavier. That's what it's tended to be all year. So I want to give an example of that. Lacazette, for example, um, was in foot birthday. By the time that he was in foot birthday, he was down at 19, bangy spike to 32, got up as high as 33. Now, there's a caveat here with Alex Lac Alexander Lacazette in that we had the mid-icon and the SBCs. We had a lot of stuff going on at that time, which probably caused the spike to be even more extreme than it might have been normally. But it's still a very, very heavy climb for Alexander Lacazette. And so for me... I think that's going to be a good play this year. When most consistent is announced, the team is announced, I'm probably going to buy quite heavily into a lot of the cards. Because just as standard, we always know, cards in pack, his non-special card version goes up in value. It just happens with every card. But I think with more expensive cards, it tends to be even better. Or more meta cards, because let's look at Musa Sissoko. Musa Sissoko in foot birthday one, went into packs on the 27th of March. If we look at his price, 25th of March, he's in and around this price. 2.9 the day before, gets as high as 5 that's a 2,000 coin climb for a card like that, up to 5k, drops off, climbs again to 5.2 before finally dropping off back to really the early price. Gets back up again here, um, when, I think this is when they're all back in packs again, if I'm not mistaken. They're all back in packs again, gets up again, and then before coming right back down again. So you can see the big fluctuations here and, and, and how it affects the market and how it makes a difference on the market. Again, it's a really good play for when these cards are selected to go out and buy some of them. Specifically look at ones that are... I like 85 pluses, um, cards that are already 85 pluses, but people like Leno, if Leno gets in, that's a good play. I don't really like Gulaxi, I've got to be honest with you, I think he will go up in price, but I like players that are relatively going to help to sort of link. Gulaxi doesn't really help link out a Bundesliga for an SBC, whereas Leno does help link outside of the Premier League. They're the ones that I really, really like. PK could be a good shout again, but they will go up, go up in price out of packs. But I like that sort of mid area, the sort of cards you can invest in between 10 and 20k. They're the ones that I like the most. They're the ones I think have the most profit potential. But we will just talk briefly, but I'll go into more detail about this later in the week. We'll talk briefly about these cards themselves. Now, I've got Sissoko here as an example because 
a lot of people know that I bought into Sissoko when he was in foot birthday. What we have seen consistently this year, and it's happened every single promo, is players get released and six o'clock, they have a price. Seven o'clock, more get released and they undercut those prices. Eight o'clock, they come in and undercut those prices. But seven o'clock, I, I've seen a lot of the time with the second lightning round, if we get lightning rounds, which I'm pretty sure we will, and there's a good opportunity to buy into these cards. Now, I just want to show you, I can't really show you hourly graphs because it only shows three days. But he was 8.32 on the day he got released. And then he dropped down and dropped down steadily to 6.84 throughout that week and got up again. At this point here, when he was 8.36, I bought into uh, Mr. Sissoko's at 6.70. Those guys who were watching my stream saw me do it. And those guys who were in my Discord, I advised them to do it. And a few did. I bought into it at 6.70. He got back up to about 8.50 again, if I remember rightly. I sold at about 800k. There is a huge potential to make very quick coins from these cards, but it is incredibly, incredibly risky. You have to watch the market and see what it's doing. But I don't like this methodology and mindset of that card's just too cheap. I just I don't like that. But there is a, there is a way of thinking in, in a similar vein to that of he's maybe come out of packs and the market's decided for that hour he's at 850k. Suddenly I see a 200k drop off in the next lightning round. I'm like, well, hang on. Because usually it takes 20 minutes, half an hour, people to go, actually, that card's not as good. Trent Alexander Arnold comes to mind for that. I remember he sent a mid card. Everyone was so hyped when he came out. I've seen him on the market at 600. He was being sold at 600. An hour later, he was down at like 300k. As people realised the card wasn't actually as special as they thought it was going to be. Um, so that's something you can think about doing. And if you look at Alan, for example, from last year, I remember buying this card and buying into him and, and, and making profit out of him. Because what I did was when he came out and it was like, okay, cool, Alan's come out. He came out in weekend league. Didn't hold a value. And I bought into him in the sell-off. And I was like, he got really, really low in the sell-off. I think he got back to, I can't remember the exact amount, but I think 280s were, were relatively common at one point. And I held on to him for the week and sold him into weekend league. And I remember selling him for about 100k profit, give or take, or maybe 80k profit, give or take at a time in the Allens last year because I was just like, he's come down too much. So that's something to be mindful of. On the Friday, you'll see their price. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to hold relatively stable because of weekend league, but you can buy in second lightning rounds where I like the sweet spot. Second lightning rounds where I've been buying in and then we sell off and make profit that way, okay? But you can also buy in, in the sell-off from Weekend League if everyone starts to list those cards. If you can get... It's the same for any sort of Thursday flip, but especially for cards that have just been supplied, you can pick up cards. The caveat to that... The caveat to that is this year we've seen a slight difference. Is we see with promo teams, when they're in the packs, throughout the week, I think they come down. And I think, like I'm going to show you here, Wednesday's the point that I like to buy in. And people have said to me they prefer Sundays, but there's something about Wednesdays that I always find a point on Wednesdays at 6pm on a Wednesday when the team's in packs that I think, bang, that's the moment I want to buy in and with weekend league rewards. I don't know what it is about the promo cards, but it happened with Marlon, it happened with a few of them. They get to their lowest end and then they climb quite rapidly into weekend league. Um, again, you can see on the Wednesday here, 684, gets up to 773 by the time weekend league comes around on the Saturday. They get quite a rapid climb from there. So I would, that's where I would look to do it. Now, I'm going to go into way more detail with this in another video. I'm going to go into much more detail with this in another video. Right now, my advice to you is to invest in fodder. Not right now, it's specifically right now, although you probably could think about it. If the prices have come down from when I've recorded this video, I like fodder as an investment. I really, really like fodder as an investment because I've been seen all year, it's gone up in value every time there's an SBC, which is guaranteed most consistent. People will just do it. Even with the foot birthday SBCs that had guaranteed win refreshes in them, people still did them. The prices still spiked. So buy in if you've got the coins and you can buy in at all levels. If you've got not massive budget, you can buy in at other levels and you can buy into low end, really low end like Bundesliga right mids just for the daily SBCs. You will make profit. It will happen. But that's really how to get ready for this, pro this promo. Throughout this week, we're going to be talking about market trends and how it works and how it goes on to give you guys a bit more information. But that is going to be the end of the video. If you are new around here, please do subscribe down below. Click the like button, all that good stuff. It is hugely, hugely appreciated. But for now, lads, I am out. Peace out. I will speak to you soon.